Hello, I'm Melissa Ford and I'm the archivist at the Marshall and Frederick Sculpture Museum and also the curator of the exhibition which is Art and Architecture, the Collaborative Spirit of the Interwar Period in Detroit. And this exhibition deals primarily with art and architecture during the 1920s and 30s in the city of Detroit and its surrounding areas. And we focus on particular buildings and genres of architecture, um, including Art Deco and Classical Revival. This exhibition evolved from an idea that we had regarding Marshall and his work with architects. Marshall can be known as an architectural sculptor. He worked with a variety of different architects during his t career, one of them being Alden B. Dow. Um, they worked on several different projects together, including the uh, McMorrin Auditorium, where Marshall completed a fountain that stands outside the auditorium today. We set up a meeting with the Alden B. Dow Home and Studio to discuss the possibility of doing an exhibition together. Unfortunately, there weren't enough archival materials that existed still that would allow us to have a full-fledged exhibition, but we decided to expand our concept to include numerous Detroit artists and architects working during this time period of the 1920s and 30s. So we focused on several different architects, including Albert Kahn, Wirt C. Rowland, and several different architectural firms and discussed the craftsmen and artists that they worked with and selected several different types of buildings to focus on in the exhibition. The introduction of the exhibition talks about the factors that led to this collaborative um, spirit that was found during this time period. So we focus on the 1893 Chicago World's Fair, the training that architects received, the automobile boom in Detroit and the financing and patrons that resulted from this boom as well as the City Beautiful movement. Also we talk about the Arts and Crafts movement and the Detroit Society of Arts and Crafts which was very influential in this time period. The next section that we will see is skyscrapers. Detroit has one of the largest collection of Art Deco skyscrapers in the United States. Um, we focus primarily on three buildings from this time period. The first is the Penobscot building, the second is the Guardian building, and finally is the Fisher building. The Guardian Building is unique because the architect of this building really believed in the concept of total design. He designed this building down to the smallest detail. Everything from the waitress uniforms to the plates used in the dining hall. Burt Rowland, the architect, was very involved in this project. He picked all of the artists who would be working with him and often collaborated with them on their designs working with um, Mary Chase Stratton of Palauk Pottery. He provided colors with, to her and she created the glazes for the tiles that are used in the building. The Fisher building is also a very unique building for this exhibition. The building features numerous craftsmen, including four different sculptor, sculptors, Gary Mel Melchers being the most prominent one. He worked on the Fisher building's lobby providing the mosaics that are found on the ceiling, as well as the exterior ornamentation that you see. We have a chair from the, the, the theater's original design, which was originally in a Mayan Aztec motif. And as you can see in the chair, you can see the face of Mayan imagery on the back of that. The next section is civic architecture, and we focus on three buildings in this section. Uh, we focus on the Detroit Institute of Arts, the Detroit Public Library's main branch, and the Horace H. Rackham Educational Memorial Building. All three of these buildings are found in the city's cultural center, which is in midtown Detroit. 
All three of these buildings were designed to be in harmony with one another. The last building to be completed in this civic group is the Horace H. Bracken building, and that was done in 1939. Uh, Marshall Fredericks did all of the reliefs on the exterior of this building. We have two of in the exhibition. They are Pegasus and Educational, and they are two of the 46 reliefs that you would find on the building. The next section is religious architecture, and we feature three different houses of worship in Detroit. They are the Cathedral of the Most Blessed Sacrament, uh, Jefferson Avenue Presbyterian Church, and Temple Beth El. All three were designed during the same time period. They feature a variety of different art artists. Um, the Cathedral of the Most Blessed Sacrament features work again by Corrado Parducci, and we have some of his tools and plaster models in the exhibition. Corrado Parducci completed over 500 commissions in the city of Detroit and its surrounding area during his lifetime. You can't walk down the streets of Detroit without seeing some of his work on the city's major buildings. Jefferson Avenue Presbyterian Church fe features stained glass by w Willett Studios, and we have some photographs of that in the exhibition. And Temple Beth El features murals on its ceiling by Myron Barlow, who was a Detroit painter who um, actually worked out of France. The next section is residential architecture, and we feature three different um, homes that were owned by some of the city's wealthiest residents. The first is Rose Terrace, which is in Gross Point. Unfortunately, is no longer there. It was just demolished in the 1970s, but its music room is on display at the Detroit Institute of Arts. We have several pieces that were saved from this house. One of the other homes featured in the exhibition is Meadowbrook Hall, which is in Rochester, Michigan. And this 110 room mansion is in the Tudor style. It was designed by William Cap. And a unique thing about this is when William Cap, Cap was working on the house, he traveled on the honeymoon of the owners of the home, Alfred and Matilda Wilson, with them to England to get ideas for this house. They traveled to all the great homes in, around the English countryside, sketching, gathering ideas for what they wanted their home in Michigan to look like. And we have several items from Meadowbrook Hall. We have drawings for some of the furniture pieces. Um, one in particular was done for Mrs. Wilson's bedroom, which was in the Louis XVI style. Um, very ornate room. We also have hand-painted doorknobs and plaster models from the Christopher Wren dining room in the home. And finally, we have the Lawrence Fisher Mansion, which is on the shores of the Detroit River. And this home is a very unique home. It has an eclectic style, um, very art deco, but also inspired by the architecture of California and Florida that was happening during the time, so it has kind of a Spanish style to it. And we have drawings from the home's interior designer, which is Francis Geck, um, for some of his pieces in the home, including the ballroom mirror he did. Then finally, we have um, Cranbrook, and we feature four buildings from Cranbrook. Cranbrook is a educational institution in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan and it was started by George Booth and his wife Ellen. And we feature their home, which Cranbrook House, which was designed by Albert Kahn, and includes very many beautiful pieces. Um, specifically, we discuss the works by John Kirchmeier, who was a wood carver from Germany, and he carved an overmantle, which features um, figures of notable artists from the time period. Um, there's even a, an image in there of Albert Kahn, the house's architect, and of himself. Then next we discuss Christ Church Cranbrook, which was a church built on the property by George Booth and still stands today. Um, this church is really the epitome of the ideal of arts and crafts. It's just full of works by um, local and national artists from the time period. There's beautiful frescoes by Catherine McEwen, more carvings by John, John Kirchmeier, Powabic Tile. It's just a stunning, stunning church. Then we move on to the two schools on the property, Kingswood School, which was for girls, and Cranbrook School for boys. 
both schools showcase the work of the Saarinen family who collaborated on the design of the entire Cranbrook community. Elio Saarinen and his wife and children um, worked on these projects together. They consulted with one another. Saarinen's wife contributed numerous textiles to these schools and Aero Saren and her, his son did uh, the furniture designs for them, uh, specifically the furniture designs for Kingswood School, which are some of his first designs in the country. He completed these as a, as a high schooler, so as a teenager, he designed these pieces of furniture. And then the daughter, P Pipson, did some of the interior design work doing stencil decorations for ceilings in the buildings. And then finally, we conclude with a discussion of what led to the decline of these collaborations between artists and architects. Of course, the onset of the Great Depression in 1929 dramatically affected the financing that was available for these types of projects. No longer were owners of companies and, and patrons of the arts able to finance such projects, which would in include so many different types of art and involved artists and craftsmen. Additionally, um, by the time the Great Depression had ended, many of the artists and craftsmen who had worked during this time period had passed away or were no longer working actively in the field. Following World War II, the art and architecture styles in the country changed dramatically. Um, the Art Deco was replaced by the international movement or modern style of architecture, which focused more on the structure itself, um, using the shape of the building as decoration itself. One of the things that I hope people take away from this exhibition is just the beauty of the buildings themselves. I hope it encourages them to explore the city of Detroit and its architecture because it truly does have some of the most outstanding pre-World War II architecture in the country. For those folks who may not be able to travel to Detroit, I really hope this encourages them to look around their own community to see the beautiful works of art and the beautiful architecture that surround them every day. This time period has so many wonderful examples of Art Deco and classical revival architecture and most cities um, should have pieces that you should be able just to see by walking down the street.